Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We are so happy to have you here. If you're new, welcome to High Vibe in It. If you're old, welcome back. We love you. It's your homegirl, Kelsey Aida here. I'm also being joined with Lindsay Robinson. And today we have a very special guest, Miss Nadine Artemis, who is the author of Renegade Beauty and creator of Living Libations. And I am very excited to have her on the podcast today because as you know, if you've been listening to the show, Lindsay and I have been on a non-toxic, less plastic kick. And we are trying to figure out the best products to use and the best um, just like guidelines to abide by to bring it back to nature and be beautiful and healthy and live our best lives without all the toxins that are everywhere. So so I'm really excited to have Miss Nadine on today because she is an expert in all things natural beauty and she's going to give us her wisdom and guidance and of course hopefully point us to all her awesome products which seem amazing which I'm very excited to try from her brand Living Libations. So Nadine thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah we're super excited. Lindsay I know you always like to ask first questions so I'll leave it to you. (laughs) Well I know I know that Nadine's team and I have been in touch before and she's been like she's been on the docks for a while like we we scheduled her out really far so we've been kind of I've been anticipating this for a while um I'm really happy to see your face and connect with you and I know everybody listening is gonna have gonna find so much uh value in what you have to say so first things first I always like to ask uh and get the origin story from our from our I almost said clients from our guests our wonderful guests so how did you start like what's your journey been like and what really brought you to today yeah, well, it's it's a deep one. So I'm always trying, what part of the timeline do I jump in? But I definitely like spent my childhood like immersed in nature and really, you know, mixing petals and mud and all that kind of stuff. And at the same time was like concocting things in the home, raiding my mother's bathroom, mixing her Chanel number no. five with the skull and crossbone stuff under the sink and all kinds of fun like that. <laughs> I bet she loved that. Oh yeah, <laughs> she did. Um, However, she did, she was always supporting of our talents and stuff. So when we had to do a grade nine science fair project, which was so fun because we finally got to choose our own topic. And I decided to do, um, I found a book at the library that explained the the history and the mystery about perfume. Mm -hmm. And that was in grade nine. And I was definitely collecting all perfumes at that time and mixing them. So I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And then the book really talked about, you know, ancient Egypt and the distillation of plants and flowers. And I found that thrilling. And, you know, my great grandfather had also been the president of the London Egyptology Society and we had some really trippy paintings of his that he did as he was an artist that was brought with like Howard Carter to like in the 1890s and such to be the illustrator of the archaeological digs. Anyway, um, back to perfumes. So I did that. I remade L'Air de Ton and the book talks about using essential oils. That that's what these ancient distillates were now called and that you could probably find them at your health food store. So my mom drove me to this big city. We went to the health food store and I first got my first whiffs of jasmine and orange and ylang. And I not like my brain knew the difference between synthetics and natural yet, but they definitely pierced through. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is what perfume's made of. Like, this is so cool. Because when you look at the labels, it was all just like weird words that have no connection <laughs> to reality. So that was really fun. And then, you know, just like classic teen in the 80s, just, you know loved all the bottles and just mixing and being a full team diving in but and I thought you know then the body shop came along and it looked seemed natural but then I get to university and I'm skipping school and I'm watching a show and I'm learning about the which was really new at the time early 90s like uh, environmental connection of health and food and like growing agriculture and pesticides And like that was all coming into play. And luckily also on my street home was a little health food store inside a home. And so I got all the books and it was called Grains and Beans and Things. And I like bought every library, every bean. And I really started to endeavor to make my own food. And then I also got this book that was like about dissecting labels at the supermarket. So like you really finally understood what it all meant. And then I was like, hey, bathroom, what's on your labels? And then I was like, oh "Oh my God, it's like total BS. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, you know, the body shop was just still another promised land of petroleum, mm -hmm. you know, words like, you know, cucumber face toner, the, cu the face toner, toner never met a cucumber. Mm -hmm. You know, the fuzzy peach bath oil never saw a peach. <laughs> so I was kind of like, aha. And, but I was like, really, I think that was probably also the greatest discovery in my life because I was like, oh, now I just get to make my own stuff. So luckily I was living on my own and had my own kitchen and I just like went to town and that was the beginning of making the perfumes and the lip balms. And then I had to find the raw materials, you know, so then I just start like, you know, writing different countries and consulates and figure out like the whole distillation thing around the world, which was a whole code to crack before the internet existed. <laughs> um, and then I just, you know, sort of gathered because I would read about like beautiful oils and raw materials or things they use in ancient Egypt. And I mean, some don't exist today, but you know, I couldn't find them in on at the health food store. So I had to like start actually importing essential oils and raw materials into Canada. So then I learned about importing and exporting all that kind of stuff. So needless to say, by the time I graduated, um, I was ready, like I, would, I was already formulating, I had all my formulas in my store. So within six months, I opened up North I was America. Say, you can't not be a business owner at that point. Like <laughs> yeah. you, you have everything, you have everything. Start a I company. I had to finish uh, university though, you know what I mean? But I was just yeah. so ready to be done with school. Um, but that was great too, because I got less bored and I you know, skip school less often because I got the subjects that I mm -hmm. wanted. And at the same time, I'm doing women's studies and we're like reading our bodies ourselves and I'm other understanding about the history and the devastation really of like, you know, that we've, how we've been treating human bodies, but also women's bodies, you know, cross culturally, trans historically, whether it's lead in the lipstick or mercury, you know, in the flesh or, you know, all the other from hysterectomies and the yeah. whole gamut of having a female body is really quite fascinating. And I find the whole thing intersects and I did papers on midwifery and beauty and beauty myths and the female orgasm. And I brought it all together and I always found it totally related to what we were putting on our bodies. So just so eager to be done with school and then yeah, opened up that store and you know, kind of here we are today. <laughs> So let's talk for those that don't know, what is, what is your company? What are Living Libations? What is this? So Living Libations is the company that I created and it's got all our beautiful formulas. And so since that time, since around 1819, I've been working on, you know, botanical skincare formulations, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, toothpaste, perfume, uh, you know, shampoo, deodorant, Lip balm. I'm interested in these perfumes because now Me that too. I like, <laughs> it's hard to find non-toxic perfume. Oh, and oh. even the ones that I love, like I oh. smell them now that I'm that I'm older and I'm like very attracted to the natural stuff, like more so than ever. I smell my favorite perfume and I'm like, what happened? Because <laughs> it does not smell as good as it used to smell. Because I know it's just not only is it not real, you know, natural but it's yeah. probably toxic. <laughs> let's, oh, let's for sure. Real. It's funny perfumes. They're so expensive. And like what is inside the juice of commercial perfumes is so poisonous. <laughs> inexpensive too, though. Like, yeah, it's like a 90% alcohol, profit margin, like a rubbing alcohol, insane. whatever else. Yeah. And then it's every beautiful flower synthesized, you know, mm. and like, it's so like, we have such exquisite perfumes. They're so fun to make because they get, it's just for pure creativity of like creating a classic aroma. I mean, the colognes for the men and the petal perfumes, I mean, you will find, you will find your signature perfume because it's like perfume was like, that was the original intention of a perfume was yep. like to communicate with the gods and to have that like exchange. So it yeah. was meant to be the purest form of like, a communication mm -hmm. and that's you know what we've turned it into today well and I think it's so like for me I like scents and things that complement my own pheromones it's that's yeah well that's like, and that's, that's that all the essential oils do which is yeah. why also our, our deodorants which we we have mm -hmm. two kinds. We have poetic pits and underarm charms. Underarm charms are like a cream deodorant. And the poetic, poetic pits. pits. <laughs> I'm saying that. Poetic pits. I love that. 
Well, and they, that is like, I've been making the poetic pits for like over 20 years and they're so classic because there's no deodorant like it on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's actually mainly sandalwood because I was thinking of that years ago because it actually has a, a phyto hormone that is very similar to our androstrone. And it is just got this viscosity. Of course, it's antibacterial, antifungal. Plus, it's like mixing and melding with your own pheromones. So yeah. it takes you and makes it better. So that when people are sweating and like hot yoga, workout, whatever, after people come up to them and they're like, how do you smell so good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I, I really do think that, of course, we're attracted to certain scents because of that in it, like we don't know what's happening. Most people don't know that the reason they're attracted to something is because it's complimentary to them. But the perfume industry and like all of the the mainstream industries don't they don't they don't care about any of that. They're like, this is what people want. So you need it too. And so you well, buy yeah. well then it's like a fake want too. It's yeah. like yeah, I mean yeah. it's the beautiful, like amazing ad. I'm thinking of like you know, classic Chanel number five ad or something. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of those ones. And it is, it's really, it's literally the sale of the fantasy. Yep. With like kind of a choking hazard of the perfume when you wear it and literally it's like we just sell a new perfume that's like exquisite and beautiful mm -hmm. and you get to make up the fantasy <laughs> you know what I mean yeah but uh yeah that's sort of where we're at with skincare but it really can be it's just such a beautiful thing and I write about mm -hmm. in my book how things like birth control pills or masking pheromones has actually uh from studies shown that we're not picking the right mates Oh, because we're crazy. messing with the pheromones. <laughs> My mind just blew. That's that's <laughs> so true. That's one of those things that you know, until you really hear it, you're not really thinking about it. I believe that is so true because obviously, going back to basics, going back to the beginning, that's how we did it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's how animals still do it. You see dogs do it in the park all the time. Yeah, and we'll still uh, do it too. Like, even if you see what you deem an attractive person, uh -huh. a, a mate or a potential mate across the room, so it's all visually happening, you get close. And again, in your, it's not a conscious smell, like, oh, they're wearing Old Spice and I don't like that. But as you get closer, you're literally picking up pheromones and information totally. on an unconscious level, and then you're making other decisions. Totally. And if that doesn't line up with what you saw was attractive, then, you know, it might not. I still will walk up to my husband and like smell his arm, you know, yeah. because his, yeah. for some reason, and I know people can relate to this. When you find that person, like they smell, yeah. they smell good. They compliment you. And my yeah. kids smell amazing now because they have both of our pheromones. It's yeah. just too funny. And then so when you cute. snuggle up to that mate, then you, you want yes. like pheromone. You don't want it masked. You know what I mean? You want to, but you also don't necessarily want the more rancor part of our right. aromas and right. the essential I is just, smell in his pits let's put it that yeah. way that's not a thing I do at all but you will I I think you will once he puts once on he... the poetic pits because <laughs> <laughs> that whole like organic like sort of more primordial part of yourself doesn't want to sniff that yes. arm and then be led to old spice because then you're going right. to be like you know in your head other warning signals will go off and it's not like aligned I mm. challenge everyone listening, if they're dating or if they have somebody, smell them without any, like, like just their arm or something <laughs> harmless. Smell their neck, when you, you go know? in for the hug, just a quick oh look. Yes. <laughs> and just see, oh my gosh, that is such good information. That's, isn't that so good, Kelsey? Like, why, did, yes. why is this bothering me so and much? Also, that I I need, I need to go back to this orgasm point that you alluded to <laughs> earlier. Can you please elaborate on what you were insinuating with? I know you wrote a whole paper it on it, blah, blah, together. blah. So there's probably places <laughs> where we can go read, yeah, yeah. but educate us oh, on yeah. how natural beauty can help our orgasms. I must know. Yes, yes. Well, I wasn't co fully connecting. I was just really going into sort of the, the journey of the woman's orgasm sort of the past 400 years in Western culture which yes, it does tie into beauty. That's a whole episode. <laughs> it's a whole episode. But I mean, for sure, I mean, just having like a healthy yoni is essential for, for uh, you know, just health and the healthy yonis would include like fun orgasms and fertility, for example, um, is all affected by our yoni microbiome, which us, our yoni is the word I use for vagina, mm -hmm. just 
just we're, we're off, familiar. I'm sure our we're familiar, knows. but good clarification yeah, yeah, yeah. in case yeah, yeah, some yeah. people haven't heard that word. It's a Sanskrit word meaning, you know, for that area. Um, and, you know, because I can blush a bit when I talk about vaginas and stuff too, like right now. <laughs> you mean you didn't just come, come on here to talk about vaginas for 45 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> Oh, you know, I mean, generally, a lot of people now know about the microbiome in our guts. And yeah. so uh, there's a huge microbiome on our skin. It's obviously all connected, but like there's a microbiome area. So the mouth, the skin, ear, nose, throat, that's another big area. Mm -hmm. And for women, the yoni microbiome is key. And it's key to like vitality as well as fertility. So something, you know, as just like the yoni microbiome being off could be the root cause of an infertility issue. Um, you know, it may not be even hormonal. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we're, you know, using to take care of down there is just disastrous, you know? So, and I, in my book, I have a whole chapter on Yoni care and we also go into the history of like douches and deodorants and mm -hmm. the whole stuff for down there. And it's crazy. Oh, I'm getting, it I'm getting angry already <laughs> with Lysol. No, was it Listerine first? No, it was Lysol. Oh, yes. no. Lysol first. Lysol. That's Stop it. And the painful. ads, look them up. Vintage Lysol douche ads. Hang on. Hang on. I have, I have a, a shot in the dark. Were these made by men? <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. Of course. I even have a some Lysol in there. Oh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. My We're mind is being you know. blown. Even just some body washes, they sting immediately when they yeah, touch yeah. that the area. And I'm just like, get it off insane. me. Well, after some women died from the Lysol, Listerine was like, hey, we're like a gentler option. And then, I mean, it just goes on from there. I mean, and again, including all of deaths along the way. Wow. So, okay, so maybe this- You're making me mad. We have to move on because I'm getting <laughs> I'm so sorry, angry sorry. at the industry right now. <laughs> but don't put things down there that are like, just like natural bar soap. Yeah. Like we have soaps, like a clay soap and stuff. But again, like a farmer's market, your health food store, they're going to have like just real soap. You're not going to be using Dial mm -hmm. or Dove, and it doesn't need to be obsessively cleaned. It's actually like the original self-cleaning oven. It is. Yes. It is. That's why when, when yeah. I first learned that, I was like, what are you talking about then? Like, you're telling me all these things I need to do, but it's self-clean. If I just let it take care of itself, you know, in a yes. sense. Yeah. Gosh, well, so when the microbiome easier. is going to take care of it, right? Yes. Just like we got to let the microbiome take care of our skin. So, um, you know, just using oil, you can use oils down there. We make yoni oils. Um, and that is lovely and also helps to balance because even soap is even natural soap can be a bit, you know, drying, that kind of thing. So we got to keep that. It's not about like sex lubrication, but just like lubrication and like even toilet paper. I know this is very detailed, but there's like fibers and stuff and chemicals that come off of that all the time. So when you have that little bit of serum, it just kind of creates like a very, very lovely mm -hmm. barrier, keeps things happy and like polyester underwear your yoni is going to rebel at <laughs> polyester underwear yes. okay <laughs> yes so no on that and then tampons and stuff so filled with chemicals literally I say yeah I, I I totally love everything you're saying and it, it just hit me that I need to say this like we okay. women right yeah. have been taught I know I have and I know it's getting better because now there's more products, but like I was born in 1985. I, I grew up with, here's what you need to do. And oh, yeah. your, your vagina is so complicated. Like you're going to complicated you, and it yeah, smells it's and it's so hard. If you do nothing, then, you know, it's gonna You're going to get an infection, all these things. But maybe. Oh my gosh. What a concept. Leave it alone. Maybe it's <laughs> so complicated and feels so hard because of all the crap people are telling us to do. Yeah, or the bubble bath we're bathing in, oh right? That's like giving us a yeast infection or the glycerine-based lubricants like KY jelly that we think are okay, but literally are feeding yeast because of the sugar content. And when we look at the use of KY jelly, what it's showing is temporary lubrication, but through the scientific concept called osmolarity, the cells actually release their water. So you're creating very short-term hydration, long-term drought, to such an extent that the cells inside the vagina slough off easier, create an easier environment for STDs. And when they're examined in the microscope, they look like cellular raisins. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Kelsey, I'm so glad you asked this question because I did not, I really didn't know how much untapped information 
is so readily available if you just ask the question. Well, and our viewership <laughs> is like 98% women. So I think yeah. it's important that we, cause we've been on our show exploring like household products that are better options and yeah. better non-toxic living and using cardboard instead of plastic and all these things. But we really haven't had too much in-depth information about like specifically for women, beauty yeah. products, yoni things. Like, I think this is really cool that we're touching on all of this because we've just been taught all the things. So we'll buy all the toxic stuff. So we'll spend all the money and then we'll have all the problems and then we'll spend more money because we have more problems and it's just a whole vicious cycle. So I'm glad that we're breaking the cycle <laughs> and freeing our yonis once and for all. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about coconut oil? I was just going to say coconut oil great have it by your bedside it's amazing or jojoba or even olive oil you know and again like everything like yeah. living libations I've made a beautiful product for all this but seriously you don't have to buy my line you can we can I always talk about like what you can get from the you know mm -hmm. having your pantry that's literally a thousand times better than anything that costs more or is fancy is or is in a whatever cosmetic store yeah yeah Good to know. know. And you were, you, is important. you were also, talking about yeah. tampons, which, you know, yeah. is a huge one, how toxic those are. Ugh. Yes. Well, um, I just want to say one more thing on yeah. uh, KY and stuff. Sperm motility, literally affected by most lubricants. So again, some infertility isn't hard, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a great mystery. Yeah. Tampons, the S- what's that the toxic shock syndrome thing? yes that yeah. actually is probably stemming from the mold and ingredients in the wow. tampon it seems from a study that was done this isn't just my conjecturing it's in my I write about it in my book but regardless of that extreme case um you've got you know this bleach dioxin i mean the amount of chemicals gmo cotton and cotton is mm -hmm. one of the most chemically laden materials on the planet and that's going right up into the apex of your being where yep. the skin the epithelium is one cell thick and you're like a little it's like a straw just sucking in all that dioxin and stuff mm. so there's that now but it's also 2020 or whatever year it is and we have like a lot 2021 of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever and year it is whatever's happening i agree i don't even time. know anymore <laughs> And um, so there was like, you, I mean, there was amazing options, you know, organic uh, tampons, totally easy to find everything. But I, I even would say like, when possible, don't even use that. Yeah. Like yeah. You got to kind of let it out, let it flow, but great. We have tampons for when, you know, if you got to like Olympic swim, <laughs> whatever, we've got options and there's mm -hmm. even things now for beds and underwear where you can just kind of let loose a bit. Cause you do, you've got to let it flow out. I you know? love period underwear that is yeah, my jam ever since I started it. using it <laughs> it's I'm the still, best because then I'm you feel like so you're actually detoxing and it's going yeah, out of your yeah. body you're not just holding it for eight hours till you release and the it's tampon improved. I mean the improvements in the past three years to the period underwear is phenomenal mm -hmm. like when I wrote my book I was like and can somebody do an organic version please and now there's like many options <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool so so important oh thank goodness. you for all these tips what other what big beauty products or female products other than the Yoni stuff that we've touched on and perfume, especially, would you say are like, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck as far as switching from a non-toxic to a natural? And maybe could you go into like something that you offer and also like something someone could find at the grocery? Yeah. Well, I do think the deodorant, which we talked about the poetic pits and stuff, because again, that's like also women shave their armpits generally. So that's like, again, Super you're absorbent. like, right. Allowing that to come right into the open pores. You've just shaved. Um, and we make them as we discussed, but also you could naturally, you know, they're great to get in the sun. You can dust them with a little bit of baking soda. Mm -hmm. and I love baking soda. Yeah, yes. It's great. And just classic, um, organic, pure sandalwood, which we also have, but you know, there's other in existence and that you can just like man, woman, child, you know, whatever. That's like really simple. I just want to say the deodorant is a huge one. It was a, was one of the first things I switched out getting yeah. pregnant and becoming a mom because I cannot, it's easy not to care about yourself. We do it all the time, especially when you're young, but now I have a baby that I'm nursing 
and mm. I'm putting aluminum yeah. and all this crap right next to where he's going to be eating. Like, are you kidding me? So that was one of the first most important things. So if you're considering ever having a family or just being healthier, stop with the aluminum. Really, really stop. It's a, it's a tiny amount, but like, right, that's 40, 50, 60 it's every years day. of a daily yeah. dose. Yeah. And the stone deodorants, they also have a form of aluminum. They seem like a very natural concept. Also, I'm going to tell you, this yeah. is a perfect timing for this episode because it's right going to, it's going to be about like Christmas shopping time. And I just told my husband last night, my son is turning 10 in January. Mm. And so I want to get him some sort of like toiletry now uh, yeah. man starter kit. Cause his, yeah. his pits have been t- yeah. saying stuff lately. Okay. Yeah, I think you'll like the quota pits. So what if I just like went and like scout like a uh, uh, scoured your line and just got like a whole bunch of Christmas gifts for I mean I know it's not great Christmas but we can no. present it in a way that's like hey you're a man now yeah. <laughs> you smell like a man now so here you go that's I think so it's sweet. such a great idea um to to look into this for people that you love and and people that you care about wanting them to be is detox the right word? One of the more non-toxic and, and just you know, really good for them. Detox products. aside, once, I mean, even that, like once people open or smell and you, I mean, yes. it's just like a funner banquet. Like it's just fun. Like love this. it's not like we have to give it all up and then just wear like Birkenstocks and drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Birkenstocks are great though believe they're shout great. out to but Birkenstock you know yeah 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 <laughs> yeah this is really timely and I think on the last episode when we were talking about like more household swaps and things you could change out I was telling how I'm gonna like gift everyone for Christmas like my favorite finds so that maybe oh, they so can good. get turned on to the brand and they can start doing that and then we just spread spread the movement of the more eco-friendly non-toxic vibes everywhere so I think that this will be another great extension of that especially for the women and men in your life and you know perfume is such a great gift for the holidays like who doesn't want to smell amazing but also we don't want all those toxins so I think this is like perfect timing I'm super super excited I like it to be simple (laughs) and the simplest thing is like every single person I don't care who you are what your situation is everyone can swap out one thing just one just one could be small and if you don't want to or you're resisting it, like what is it really costing you in the end? I got to say, I'm trying that bamboo toilet paper. And my husband, I told my husband, I was like, what do you think? What do you think of it? And he's like, it's really good. It's strong. So I don't know if we're going to just exclusively buy it, but I would love to at least supplement it sometimes and like weave it in and with, as uh, in addition to everything else we're doing. So everyone can do one thing. And it's like you said, it's so fun. I am so excited to smell these smells that you're talking about. <laughs> I can't wait. So Um, we've talked about perfume, deodorant, yoni care. What what are some other big ones? I'd say say? the other two big areas would be like face washing, cleansing, moisturizing, which can be one, and then oral care. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, dentistry. We we you mentioned that in your form. Can we talk about that for a sec? Yeah, and I have a book called Holistic Dental Care as well. So it's a really a subject near and dear to my heart. And in Renegade Beauty, my beauty book, there's also just a whole chapter on dental care. So perfect. I love deep, it because it's, it. it's a deep, deep subject. Um, so of course, um, you know, this stuff in the drugstore for taking care of your teeth is so super toxic. You can Google a stat that's a like classic mouthwash with the synthetic alcohol causes over 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year. Whoa. Damn. So let's keep using that. And, and they were wow. telling us to put it in our yonis. I'm just kidding. I don't know if it's the same company, but it it probably has the same ingredients. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. it's all so strange. Um, Wow. So um, I got a lot of natural tips and stuff uh, in my books and also on our website. So, you know, we've got eight steps. We've got a whole bunch of things. I know I have to be fast, but like even so we make toothpaste, we make dental serums, we make oil pulling serums. We've got it all. But if you just literally use like baking soda Mm -hmm. for the rest of your life, you would be a thousand times better off than using anything from the drugstore. I mean, the triclosan, the sodium lauryl sulfate, the synthetic, synthetic, synthetic alcohols alone just messes with the microbiome of the mouth. So we're getting rid of the good bacteria. Those kind of ingredients cause things like bleeding and receding gums, yeah. all the things we don't want with our oral care. And the eight steps, you can follow that like with our ingredients, or you can use the eight steps with things like baking soda and sea salt. And wherever your mouth is at, following those for like three months, twice a day, 
will turn thing will evolve things will turn things around you know you've got, if you've got a dental visit coming up in the next three to six months well really or any time in the future like start doing them now and get ready mm-hmm. and you know your appointment will just be better they mm-hmm. be like what have you been doing you don't want to know <laughs> it'll put well, you know, business we, we have dentists that will like detail like what is going what oh, are you doing yeah, right yeah. steps and then we have other dentists they're like good job amazing like I don't know what you're doing yeah but just keep doing it and like kind of like and don't tell yep. me yeah, like, don't tell me yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> hey there we hope you're enjoying this episode so far but if you want to listen to the whole thing we're going to invite you over to our podcast either search for high vibe in it on iTunes Spotify wherever you guys listen to podcasts or even better, if you want to watch the extended video version of this episode that's even longer than the actual podcast itself, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash high vibe. Lindsay, tell them what's awesome about the Patreon. Patreon is where we have all of our extended episodes. As Kelsey said, we have it on video so you can actually see the things that we're talking about. Sometimes we have visual visual aids and it's nice to know what we're talking about. We also have hangouts that we do sometimes that are exclusive to Patreon people. Um, and you can get started with all of this and bonus content and everything that we have only for the Patreon people for as little as $3, I think it's $3.33 a month. And that's it. And you guys can get all the benefits and all access to everything that we put in there. Really yeah. cool. It's really cool, really fun, super easy to join. And you guys don't even have to do that to finish this episode. If you're like, screw it, I don't want to pay any money. I just want to hear the rest of this episode. Go to our podcast, High Vibe in It. Search for it wherever you listen. It's totally free. Um, either way, enjoy the rest of the show wherever you choose to enjoy it. And we will see you guys next week because we do a new one every week. Adios. Bye.